All right, so how about this problem? Uh, we've got this uh, light pole. Uh, cables A, B, and A, C can sustain a maximum tension of 500 newtons. The pole can support a maximum compression of 300 newtons. Determine the maximum weight of the lamp that can be supported in the position shown. Uh, the force in the pole acts along the axis of the pole. All right, so uh, if we were to kind of draw a free body diagram, we would, we would draw a free body diagram of this um, point A, right? Point A, and we've got the weight acting down. We've got the tension in A, B. We've got the tension in A, C. And then this light pole, do you see how it, it's, you know, it says that it acts along the axis of the pole? Uh, can you tell that this is in compression? It said something about compression right here. This is in compression, so it's pushing into A right there. I'll call it force. OA. Um, and it's okay if you drew the force in OA um, in tension, you know, from A to O, uh, your answer would, would just come out negative, t telling you that, oh, it was actually in compression going from O to A. Uh, all right, so point A would be our point in equilibrium. The point, if we would, were to draw a free body diagram, we would draw it for that point. Now, this is one of those problems. I remember the 2D problem, uh, similar to this, where, hey, what's a maximum weight that this can support such that none of the cables exceed this right here. Uh, and what do we do? For the 2D problems, what we did was we wrote everything in terms of W, then compared them to see which one was the maximum, which one was the limiting factor, uh, we called it. So, so this one, we could do that. But in 3D, it's just a little bit more difficult. So with this one, um, for 3D problems like this, that it's, it's the maximum... You know, what's the maximum weight such that none of these ex exceed their, their maximums? With 3D problems like this, yes, I will just let you guess which one reaches its maximum. Now, all three of them are not going to reach its maximum. Do not plug in 500 for the tension in AC and 500 for the tension in AB and the 300 for the compression. Uh, no, uh, that, that mathematically would not equal zero. That that would not be in equilibrium. Only one of them reaches the maximum, right? Only one of them reaches the maximum. You can guess which one. But anyway, before we get to that, uh, this is a 3D equilibrium problem. What should we do? We should write everything in component form and then sum the force in x equals zero, sum the force in y equals zero, sum the force in z is equal to zero. So let's write everything in component form. So first of all, uh, the weight. Do we know the weight? No, we don't know the weight, so let's just say negative w in the k. You know, w in the negative k direction. Uh, then the other three are kind of given to us as dimensions. See all these dimensions. Now, it's hard to visualize, it's hard to see, uh, you, you know that these kind of these dotted lines kind of sh or they aren't dotted, but these lines right here kind of show us what quadrant it's coming into, what quadrant it is in right here. Uh, this is kind of on the floor on the x y plane. This is also on the floor. I don't know if you can tell it's on the floor in the x y plane. It has no z uh, component. All right, so let's start breaking all of these into their components. Let's start with the force in uh, that pole OA, force in OA. I'm given as dimension, so what do we do for dimensions? F equals FU, where U is R over R. R is how far does it go? So this would be, I, I don't know the magnitude, and now we need R over R. So with this one, from O to A, this R, how far does it go? It starts at O. How far does it go in the X direction? Uh, it comes forward 2 in the X direction. How far does it go in the Y? It goes back, back 1.5 in the J. How far does it go in the Z? It goes from the ground or the floor up to 6 in the K. The magnitude of that, 2 squared 1.5 squared, 6 squared, take the square root. All right, so I don't know it, but just go ahead. I like to go ahead and do the math as much as I can. Uh, this would be uh, 
and you can put the FOA in each of these or just leave it out here. 0.3 in the I, minus 0.23 in the J, 0.92 in the K. Now I prefer uh, three significant figures, but maybe it's, these are 0.230 or, or something like that. Uh, so anyway, there, there we go. That is as far as I'm going to go right now with the force in the pole. All right, so when I'm ready to uh, sum the force in X, this would be X, this would be Y, that would be Z. All right, let's look at the tension in uh, rope AB. I'm given as dimensions, so let's do F equals FU, where U is R over R. So this, I don't know the magnitude, <clears throat> but how about the R for cable AB? I kind of drew on, on top of mine. Uh, but it's in tension, so it's going from A to B. From A to B. You can look at the coordinates of B minus the coordinates of A. Or what I like to do, just ask myself, how far does it go? How far does it go in X direction? How far does it go in Y? How far does it go in Z? Now, be careful because A starts kind of off here. So to go from A to B in the X direction, we go... First, we go back two, then another four. So I've got back six, a negative six in the I. How about in the Y direction? First, we go uh, 0.5 just to get to the, the zero, and then another 0.5 to get to B. So this is three in the J. And then in the Z direction, we go down six in the K. So there's my R divided by the magnitude square root, multiply that, or, or maybe I'll just keep out this um, magnitude, and this would be negative 0.667 in the I, positive 0.333 in the J, minus 0.667 in the K. So there we go. That's as far as I'll go right there with the tension in the rope. Um, broken out into its components. Now the tension, the tension in AC, the tension in AC is the magnitude. So let's look at its um, R over R. From A to C, how far does it go in X? It just goes back to zero. From, from positive two back to zero, it goes negative two in the I. How far does it go in the J? Uh, positive 0.5 just to get to the origin, then another 1.5, sorry, positive 1.5 and another 1.5. So positive 3 in the J, and then it goes down 6 in the K. Magnitude 2 squared, 3 squared, 6 squared, square root. So the tension in AC would be the magnitude of the tension in AC times negative 0.2. 2857 uh, in the I plus 0.4286 in the J minus 0.857 in the K. Um, and there we go. That's as far as I will go with that one. All right. So I've written all four, and I put a pink star, all four of these forces in their component form. Now I think I'm ready to sum the forces in X, sum the forces in Y, sum the forces in Z. So let's do that. Let's sum the forces in X, sum the forces in Y, jump down to the next page, sum the forces in Z. So in the X direction, I've got this one right here, negative 0.2857 TAC. I've got this one, negative 0.667 TAB. Uh, then I've got this one, 0.3. F O A, uh, and, and that's it. Sum those equal to zero. All right. In the y direction, I've got that one. 0.4286 T A C. Then this one. 0.333 T A C. Then this one. Minus 0.23 F O A uh, equals zero. In the z direction, I've got negative 0.857 T A C. Uh, Minus 0 0.667, 0 0.667, TAB, is this AB or AC? AC, this should be AB. This one should be AB right there. Sorry. 
All right, and uh, and then FOA, I've got plus point nine two FOA. And then don't forget the weight. A lot of times I will forget this weight right here, uh, or I'll forget the easy ones that were already written in their component form or only in one direction. Uh, sometimes I will forget them. Uh, all right, so anyway, here are my three equations, and I have four unknowns. Right here are my three equations. I have four unknowns. So I talked about this earlier. You could try to write everything in terms of W. Say TAC is something some of the W. FOA is something some of the W. TAB is something some of the W. Uh, but that get, that gets tricky, you know. So for 3D, I, I will let you guess which one, not all three of them, but which one reaches this limiting factor. So maybe AB gets to a maximum of 500. Or maybe AC gets to a maximum of 500. Or maybe FOA gets to a maximum of 300. Um, there are some ways to make educated guesses, either mathematically or just by looking at the figure and, and figuring out which one is going to be the largest. Uh, but I'm, I'm just going to guess. Let's just guess. If you guess wrong, we'll see what happens. If you guess wrong, that's fine. It's not much more work than if you guessed right. So, uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll just guess the first one. Let, what if TAB, I'm going to guess, TAB is equal to 500. So I'd plug in 500 right there. I would plug in 500 right there. I would plug in 500 right there. And then I would have three equations, three unknowns. Uh, you know, at, at first I would try to look and see if, if any of those one equations only has one unknown. Uh, but I think I'd be out of luck. Um, I think I would kind of need to start with these two up here, and I would have two equations with two unknowns now, right? Two equations with two unknowns now. How do you like to solve that? I like to use substitution. You could you know, take one and subtract the whole uh, other one. How, you need to be able to solve two equations, two unknowns, um, to get TAC uh, is 388. All right, that's good. Uh, and I would get FOA. Oh, man. I, I would get FOA is 1444, and I would get the weight is 667 if I guessed right that that one reaches its maximum. Um, so, so this right here is the problem. I, I said that the force in the pole can't get more than 300 in compression. This is 1444 in compression, so I guessed the wrong one. I guess the wrong one. But if you guess the wrong one, you can you you and and you solve, you can see which one was the right one. Which one is the real limiting factor? This one is probably the limiting factor. I need to get it down to FOA is 300 newtons, right? I need to get it down to FOA is 300 newtons. Well, the good thing about this is these are all linear. <clears throat> these are three linear equations. I'm not going to redo all these three equations, three unknowns. I'm not going to resolve for this. I'm just going to figure out, okay, what do I need to divide by? Or, or what did I divide by to get this down to 300? I divided by 4.813. So I'm just going to take all of my answers and divide it by 4.813. And I would get tension in AB. 104. Tension in AC, 80.8. And here the answer, the weight, 138. The weight is 138. So not much more work if you guess the wrong one. Uh, just take all your answers and divide it by the same value in order to get them all below their maximums. Which one is the, the worst one? Which one's the, 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 limiting, the limiting factor? was this force in the pole, force in the pole OA. So if you had guessed this one right here to be 300 to begin with, you would have gotten these answers to begin with, and you would have said, yes, yes, yeah, okay, yeah, I guessed the right one. I guessed the wrong one, uh, and I, I noticed that, hey, that one is too high. That, that can't be possible. Um, and so I divided all those by the same value in order to get them under the maximum. So let's take a step back and look at what we did. This was one of those maximum weights such that none of these can exceed this, you know, force. 
Um, and so I broke them all to their components. I sum the force in x, sum the force in y, sum the force in z equals zero. I guessed which one reaches the maximum, and then I solved for the rest of them, and then I saw that I got the wrong, I guessed the wrong one, so I divided all of them by the same factor in order to get my, uh, get the correct answers. That's a doozy, but that was a good one. All right, test you on a lot of things. 3D vectors, can you break them into their components? Um, can you set them equal to zero and solve?